Hey guys, welcome to Rinse to Drive. This is a video on this new project of mine. I'm calling it the Rat 150. It's uh, another use for the dirt cheap Injora Ford F-150 front cab body shell. You can get these for about uh, 25 bucks Canadian, uh, say 20 bucks American, 15 bucks American. They're actually not bad guys. They come in a box and the odds that it's going to show up destroyed are pretty low. Bought mine off Amazon and they've showed up awesome guys. Uh, I think if you order them via eBay or or uh, AliExpress or something, a little bit more of a gamble based on my experience. When things come from afar, they you know a little more likely to get beat up in the process. But that's yeah, one of my favorite body shells, guys. Uh, if you're looking at the paint job going, huh, whatever. It's because uh, I did this many moons ago, and it was a real quick and dirty. I just wanted to wanted to practice a little bit of a little bit of taping and uh, spraying and use some, some crappy paint, and and it no longer looks even remotely pristine. But uh, that was kind of the purpose, guys. And it's held up all right. It's got a bunch of hot glue spots where it cracked and stuff. So you know, a bit of a rat rod type theme. Use what you got, guys. So this is installed on the uh, Kyosho Phaser Mark II body, or chassis. And uh, I made up a back half for it. Uh, if you want to go down this route, guys, you can easily use the front body mounts uh, that are on the Kyosho uh, chassis. They'll work just fine. Um, I used, or I 3D modeled up uh, an adapter body mount because I already had holes in the body. I didn't want to drill a bunch more holes. And then the back end uh, just uses the stock body mounts as well. It's uh, it's kind of a it's the roll cage that I've used for a bunch of stuff with a with a deck modeled up that has uh, mount points for the for the body posts on the uh, the phaser chassis. And then it's got a couple of supports off the back. And uh, yeah, it works pretty well, guys. Uh, if you're going to print this up, uh, you can find it on Thingiverse. I would suggest. Uh, printing the the cage itself, the center brace, and the uh, and the back parts out of uh, flexible filament, and I would be inclined to do the uh, the side the sides out of uh, out of PLA uh, to give it some some rigidity. Uh, it's up to you guys. Uh, you, I find that uh, the flexible is a little too flexible sometimes, and uh, PLA is a little too. Uh, a little too easy to break sometimes, so you kind of want to mix it up a little bit. And then the rest of this, I just uh, I made a the deck cover out of uh, cardboard and, and electrical tape, and uh, the wing out of cardboard and electrical tape, and the side pa body panels that you saw in the pictures out of electrical tape, and just hot glued it on there, guys. Super easy. Pretty much anybody can pull it off. So if you think this thing looks cool, not that hard of a project, guys. As you can see, it's not super fast. This is just the stock Kyosho motor. And I'm just taking it out for a test rip here. So it's it's not a blazing speed demon. These tires are, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think they're 90 millimeter? They're, uh, they're a street tire for, uh, for buggies. You can order them off Amazon or eBay or whatever. I got these really cheap. These were, I think, 20 bucks Canadian. They weren't super expensive, but they work all right. And uh, the thing I like about them is that uh, you can see on this gravel, the truck actually still drives all right. And with the 10 scale touring car tires, this gravel is way too big. The car, you just lose control instantly. Absolutely terrible. So running the big, uh, the big wheels is part of what I like about projects like this because it makes it may way more usable where I live. So, so that's kind of the point there. So this is running, uh, it's essentially the equivalent of uh, four-wheel drive buggy tires, guys. And it gives you a lot more versatility. You can get away with a lot more than you can with a 10-scale with a touring car. So that's, that's one of the things I really like about it. And uh, with the Kyosho Phaser, uh, the one thing that's worth noting, guys, is that chassis is longer than a standard touring car. I think it's 15 millimeters longer, if I remember correctly, maybe 20. So um, it definitely works better for this particular application, guys. A normal touring car, that uh, 
that cab I would say is just a little bit too big because it basically takes up the whole body and uh, you know you want a little bit of a little bit of gap to the to the back tires in my opinion to look halfway decent oh, roll over I gotta put some roof sliders on this guys uh, that roll over there actually scuffed up the roof pretty good and uh, it made me appreciate that the roof was actually holding up pretty well it hadn't uh, hadn't taken a lot of damage being rolled over as a crawler but uh, yeah, you roll it over on the pavement. Lots of scuffy scuffy. As you can see, not really enough power to do donuts or, or really spin the tires. Uh, for what it's worth, this pavement is quite clean right now, guys. It's uh, not really slick at all. So I thought here I might be able to get a little bit of tire spin going because this is a this has been a dirty patch forever, but it's actually too clean right now. It's uh, there's it's even this spot where you can slide it a little bit it's not not slippery enough by any stretch of the imagination to get the tires spinning so it is what it is yeah, you can at least slide the car a little bit I'm gonna get a couple of slides here yeah there you go you can slide it a little bit but like I said traction is really good out there right now and, and this thing is probably doing uh, stock Kyosho form it does you know 24 miles an hour with these wheels and tires it should be going a little bit faster might be doing 30 might I'm gonna say maybe 27 28 so it's definitely not super fast in this setup guys with uh, with a brushless setup, you can easily get 40 miles an hour out of it, and then, then things get interesting, guys. Yeah, I like this car quite a bit. It's a lot of fun to drive. This is running the uh, the lowered suspension arms that I set up so it essentially it uh, it shifts the shock mount points and uh, and uh, works a little bit better with these big uh, wheels and tires guys if you run the stock suspension it, it works fine guys but the center gravity is a little bit higher and it actually rolls over easier the other thing about these is it gives it a little bit of towing in the back uh, car pulls a lot better in a straight line and I believe it added a little bit of toe to the front, toe out that is, as you want in a four wheel drive car, but I think it's actually a little bit too much right now, guys. I think it would, uh, would drive just a little bit better with a little bit less toe. But, yeah, I mean, at this speed, it's, it's not, a, not a big deal, guys. The, uh, under 30 miles an hour, this, this car runs, runs great. It's, it's a fluke when you roll it over. It's not, uh, it's not prone to it. And there you can see not very much dirt out here, guys. Even that dirty spot barely spin the tires. It is what it is. So not the most exciting run. I just wanted to get this out for a little rip and put together a video to show you guys this, this new build. I'm pretty pleased with this one. I gotta tell you, I, I like this uh, the look of this a lot. This lower truck. I'm thinking about maybe trying to model up some ground effects for it. Uh, the only downside is, like where I live, with this huge gravel and relatively bumpy conditions everywhere, it's it's definitely not a benefit to actually, you know, go for a really super low look. It's uh, it's pretty much undrivable if you do that. So, so part of me is just thinking, ah, leave it alone. I think it looks all right the way it is. Have to admit, I, I have one of these body shells left, a clear one that needs to be painted, and I'm really, really thinking about actually using it for uh, for something like this, because uh, I think this looks pretty cool personally. But to let me what you, you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. Did it turn out as cool as I think, or is it just kind of dopey? I don't know, guys. You don't have to spend a fortune. 
I have to admit, I was motivated. I was motivated by all the people running the new Arma infraction and felony and whatnot. And I thought, ah, guys, got to be able to come up with something on the cheap. It looks cool and and it's fun to drive. This could definitely use more power, though. It's uh, it's definitely not as much fun if you can't slide it around. The uh, the performance and handling of those Arma cars is is, is uh, unbelievable, guys. But uh, but this is a whopping fifty dollar mod for the for the Kyosho guys. It's uh, it's a twenty let's call it a twenty five dollar body shell, a little bit of paint, a little bit of three D printing, cheap twenty dollar set of tires. You can't go too far wrong. Where I live, those Arma cars are almost a thousand bucks, and that's without batteries or anything. So that is what it is. If you got deep pockets, by all means. If you got shallow pockets like me, not too much money. Something like this is pretty fun. I'd actually like to find a good dirty spot to go slide it around a little bit. That's always uh, always a lot more fun. Yeah, I think it looks alright though. What else is in this car? Oh, I'm running a fan, guys, because uh, the one thing I did notice is running the big tires, the motor was getting a little bit warm. Not crazily so, uh, and definitely it was a case of the longer you're running, the, the more you notice, you know, getting a little warm. But uh, I figured, ah, I got a fan kicking around. I might as well, might as well install it, keep that motor a little cooler. So, something you might want to consider when you're running the big tires. Uh, with the brushless setups that I ran before, uh, heat was not really an issue, guys. It was, uh, it was a case of. Uh, everything being pretty smooth and that's the end guys thanks for tuning in let me know what you think of this truck in the comments that's it for wrench to drive where we ask the eternal question do you wrench to drive or do you drive to wrench